Good morning, everyone. Brian here again with BMK Retro Gaming. Uh, if you can hear a little background noise, that's uh, my uh, personal space heater. A bit cold here right now, so kind of necessary. It also has me a little bit stuffy, so forgive me if I sound a bit out of it. Anyway, um, this morning I have for us the review of the Atari VCS 2600 homebrew game, Game Panic. Now, I've been a fan of the work of and the YouTube channel and other works of the immortal John Hancock for a while now. I know many others are well aware of him and um, are also fans. Pretty well known presence, but what some may or may not realize is that he is actually very well involved with the publishing side of homebrew games. Both retro, retro games and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, even more current ones. And, well, some games, including Game Panic, were created with Mr. Hancock as the central character. In the case of Game Panic, it has a bit of history here. It originally had a release in 2014, uh, with the uh, development and programming being done by Jason Santucci, or two key, I'm not sure, that's S-A-N-T-U-C-I, and of course published by jo John Hancock. And, uh, well, around a couple years or so after that, uh, it became available in what became known as the Immortal Edition, which is an edition uh, which features a rather good size box with protective case and all for it. Excuse me, trying to clean up a little bit of something here. Ah, there we go. And it was pretty much all done in black and white and gray lettering and all. Had a full size, you know, manual and all and um, same with the cartridge art, artwork and all, stuff like that. It was available if you saw him when he had an appearance um, at uh, a convention or expo, uh, say at a booth or otherwise, and had them with him. For, I believe, about, he says, um, in what he said about, about $40 shipped, if you got it from him shipped. And I'm not sure if it would have been the exact same if you saw him and got it in person or not. But I'm guessing probably along the same lines as a pretty basic base price for it. Anyway, is one of, um, along with two other games, which we'll go over later, it was actually re released in, uh, re more recently in 2022. Again, uh, same by Jason Santucci or Tukey, uh, published by John Hancock and artwork by Corey Kramer. Anyway, um, one thing about the uh, Immortal Edition, the one I was just mentioning from back um, a little after the first release in 2014, was the proceeds, or I forget if it was part of all of them, went to what was known as Cowlitz Gamers for Kids, which, if I understand it correctly, either donates to or is actually a part of the Children's Just Justice and Advocacy Center. Um, anyway... The game is a 4K game ROM size for the game. Uh, for the game, so it's not huge, huge. It's pretty reasonable. And um, here I have the copy of the game. This is the 20, uh, 2022 release. Unlike the original that had black, white, and gray for all the art and everything on box. Uh, manual, uh, cartridge label, etc. This one's in color, looks a bit nicer. And, um, certainly this does look something like an image of John Hancock. And, uh, we can see here it says John Hancock and Jason Santucci, or Tukey, I don't know how to pronounce it. And, of course, it says Game Panic here on the top label. Basically, these are made, if I've understood right, usually from recycled combat, combat or other common cartridges from the original library that are plentiful. And uh, it comes also, it has um, your basic uh, 
contact protector protector piece here. It's pretty nice. Now, as opposed to the original um, release and the um, Immortal Edition, which had a full size, full color manual, this one came with basically just a uh, in fold out instruction uh, sheet or fold out instruction sheetlet. And it's pretty nice. Um, I'm not sure if this is uh, something that was done automatic. It looks like it was actually written, uh, looks like Mr. John Hancock actually saw, autographed it or decided to put his own John Hancock on it for me. And <clears throat> forgive the use of the uh, stupid pun there, but I take the opportunities where I get them. Gotta forgive the glare there because that's coming in pretty bad. There we go. Oh, here we go. Let me see if I can get, okay, there we go. A little bit better there. See, there's the signature. Anyway, it lays us out the story, which is basically um, that John's game room has been overrun by sp spiders and water leaks. To further complicate matters, his garage door has gone on the fritz and will only open periodically. Help him dash to the rightmost exit with a handful of games while avoiding falling water and creepy critters. And basically it has a easy difficulty setting in a hard one, which we'll get to in a sec. Anyway, uh, oh, and of course, here's one point part, scoring. 100 points are awarded for each successful exit to the far right side of the screen, which is your objective, to avoid the spiders and falling water getting from one side of the game room to the, where it says where the garage or whatever is, to the right side on the other side. 100 points are awarded for each successful exit to the far right-hand side of the screen. And um, if you can make a non-stop exit, that's 200 points. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Han... Oh, uh, well, you know, let me talk about it as we get into it, you know. Anyway, I've got it set up with my Atari... Uh, my Hyperkin Retron 77 emulation hardware clone console, which... Um, at a 4K game, game size for a homebrew, it actually does play with just fine, so make a note if that's what you happen to be using rather than original hardware or, uh, say, a um, hardware clone uh, substitute, yes, it will work with it. So anyway, let me get us up with that, and we'll take a look into the gameplay real quick. Okay, so here we go with the look into Game Panics, uh, Game Panics gameplay. Comes pretty well right up. I don't even have to worry about booting up the system first. Some games it'll do it that way with, some way it won't with the Hypercam Retro 77 uh, emulation hardware home console. Now for easy mode you set it to skill level B, which um, is kind of advisable because it's tough enough either way. Okay, you're first. That up there is... Ooh, uh, my controller is not wanting to respond right now, so give me a second to fix that. Okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and reset this thing. So it's actually on B. There we go. Reset. Okay, you just move from one side to the other, and we can see this is the immortal John Hancock himself, though. Makes him look a bit, uh, <clears throat> John's a well-rounded, uh, full-figured individual mostly, but I've never taken him for being truly fat or husky, but based on the graphic as presented here, um, you might be hard pressed to get that impression. Again, you just move from uh, use your joystick to move from left to right, getting hundred points for each successful exit. Darn it! Down there, those game pads or joy pads. You have six of them to start with. Represent your lives. Darn it! And this is on easy mode. Each one, uh, there we go, 200 for making a full non-stop dash. Another 200. From what I understand, um, from watching a video on this from earlier on, the gameplay was either adapted from, uh, based on, or made to imitate the uh, gameplay of, uh, or gameplay style of a game and watch game. 
you know, like Nintendo used to have, which you can kind of see that. I mean, it's in black and white, but that it's rather nice. And uh, it's a very simple game with very simple gameplay, which for an Atari VCS 2600 game, uh, homebrew or not, that's perfectly fine. That's what we usually expect with these types of games for the most part. Uh, of course, the more rounded looking objects are the water drops, and the other more fuzzy looking ones are the spires. And there's not much else to it but just moving from the left side of the screen to the right side as best as you can while avoiding the obstacles. And if you can do it non-stop, getting the 200 points rather than 100. So again, very, very simple gameplay, but still plenty of fun and interesting in its own way, so can't fault it. Again, it's um, pretty acceptable for an Atari VCS 2600 game, whether homebrew or not. I'd say this would actually be pretty fun in a way for, you know, like high scoring or high score challenge competitions. Because you have a very simple objective and a uh, very simple means to get to it, so seeing how high of a score you can get on it would be pretty fun. I think personally so far I've been able to get up to somewhere in the area of about 5,000 at maximum on easy mode. Playing it on hard mode on the other hand is a major pain in the neck. Well, it could be far worse than it isn't, but... Anyway, like I said, John looks like he might... Maybe he slimmed down since this game was actually created, so I don't know. But he, you get the impression that he'd be a bit larger than he really is with this. Okay, now let's try it out on, on skill level A for hard mode, which basically makes it so that... Hang on. Sometimes it does that, where it doesn't present me with a, uh... I don't know if it's a glitch or what, but sometimes it wants to present where you can't see John at first, which is weird, but... Okay, there it goes. Managed to score and it reset now, so... Here we go on, this is the hard mode, which basically just has more water drops and spiders to contend with. We can see already that it has a lot more of them than um, the easy mode. Oh, and the background is kind of meant to represent, you know, kind of a mock-up of what John's game room would be like. Which, I guess that works some. It looks a lot like, to me, like it'd be probably shelves or something. Of course, you can't really turn and go up, down, or anything like that. Your only real direction of movement is to go left to right. Of course you can retreat too, if needs be. Of course, even at a full Full on non-stop run, you can have a hard time because there are just so many spiders and water drops on hard mode that odds are they may well get you before you ever get there. And they did. I'm dead again. 3,100 points on easy mode was my top. Uh, top score. Anyway, I think you guys pretty well get the idea with the gameplay at this point. Okay, so that was Retro Game Panic, a ho uh, an Atari VCS 2600 homebrew game published by and starring the immortal John Hancock. Is it pretty good? I think so. Like I said, uh, was saying during the gameplay, it's kind of either based on, uh, adapted from, or at least modeled after the uh, gameplay style of some game and watch games like Nintendo used to have, so... It's simple, easy gameplay, perfectly acceptable for uh, an Atari VCS 2600 homebrew game or otherwise. And, um... Uh, again, it's uh, one of those where you have a very simple objective and, uh, Very simple gameplay and 
would be perfect for challengers, challenging yourself in high scores or, say, perhaps playing in a high score challenge competition. So, yes, it's a very good game. And uh, let's be honest here. Just that it features the immortal John Hancock besides being published for him, by him, makes it kind of notable because he is quite a presence in the uh, video gaming and retro video gaming communities, both on YouTube and elsewhere, so... That in itself is a big point. Uh, now, how can you get your hands on a copy of this one? Well, as with the original release and the one, you know, that was done in uh, the Immortal Edition, usually you would have to see Mr. Hancock when he's got a booth or is a presence at a gaming export convention and get one that way. However, when I was talking to him about, he did the video about the re-release of these games and this game and two others in 2022, and I let him know that, you know, well, I really don't have means to travel beyond here where I am, Nacogdoches, Texas, nonetheless, to see him at a retro gaming export convention, he basically gave me information to reach out and gain contact with him and arranged uh, for me to pay for a, a copy, to be sh uh, some co uh the copies of the games I wanted to be shipped out. Now, he'll make it pretty clear he doesn't really run a store or anything because it's pretty uh, resource-consuming and intensive, and um, so you're not going to find it that way necessarily. Again, you usually have to run into him at a convention or expo, but if you're someone like me who has this con uh, special conditions where you just can't make it to do it that way, well, I'm not going to leave it, you guys with his personal contact information or anything. Uh, I didn't ask to do that, and I wouldn't have. But keep an eye on stuff here on YouTube, on Facebook, or uh, on Twitter, you know, and reach out if you got that type of circumstance and all. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking he might be kind of changing his stance on that some because in our email conversations, he had mentioned to me this game and the others he's got. Um, he's got at least 35 copies left of, and if there ends up being enough demand for them, he's willing to make more. So, I'd say you might, even if you don't have the circumstances where you can't go see him at a retro gaming con uh, or gaming convention or expo, you might try reaching out to him anyway and see what he says. I can't speak for him and whether he'll be open to it or not, but can't hurt. Uh... As far as it goes, to get them shipped, you know, with these, um, this game uh, was $25 shipped, plus, um, and I got it with another one, which anybody who's seen my unboxing video would see, so for those two games, it was $25 a piece shipped, plus uh, about $10 uh, shipping and handling costs, which basically would add up to, that mean, this one probably cost me about $25, and you could say about $5 out of the uh, $10 shipping and handling, so... $60 altogether, so not badly priced. $25? Not bad at all. I guess even for the Immortal Edition, the $40 wasn't too bad either, but still, uh, back when that was available, but uh, still, $25 is uh, very reasonable and affordable for those who might want to try and pursue them. Anyway, I do have a couple of recommendations and links for you guys. The first is um, from Stu's Game Reviews, which I'm not sure if I've shared anything from him or not, but I've been subscribed for quite a while now. And anyway, it's where he um, just plays the game for some high scoring for a while. Uh, you should be kind of prepared to watch for a bit with that one if you really get into it, because I think he plays for just under or a little over an hour and a half, so it's a long one. Then the Immortal John Hancock himself, his uh, YouTube channel here has... Two videos on this. I'm including uh, links to both the original um, uh, one where he goes over the Immortal edition of it, which is about six years old, but still worth watching. He actually plays the game a bit more, and you see a bit more with it. And then there's uh, the one that's more recent here, where he, uh, from just this last uh, early winter or late fall, I believe, where he talks about the 2002 re-release of this and two other games that he's published, so... I will leave recommendations and links for you guys to both of those. And 
Now, those who keep an eye on this channel, um, keep your eyes peeled because I should be putting up the announcement post uh, later on um, today, uh, maybe even this morning, for what the Atari 7800 Original Library Review is going to be coming up. So watch my uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to see what it's going to be. Big shout out to my Atari 2600 Facebook group. Love you guys over there, and hopefully you'll be getting this little video upload before too terribly long this morning. Well, it's been kind of nice here. It's supposed to stay that way, so I don't think it'll take too long. Otherwise, if you enjoy this channel's content, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And please don't hesitate to leave any questions, comments, or suggestions down in the comments section below. You guys take care. Have a wonderful Sunday, and hopefully I will see everyone back here again on this coming Wednesday.